Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Welcome back to another episode of Jum'ah Nights I hope you enjoyed last week's episode where we spoke about the removal of the soul when a person is dying Today we are going to carry on that discussion and carry on that series with regards to death and barzakh where we will be speaking about the possible outcomes of barzakh and as you will all know this is a topic that is actually really really long so I'm not going to be able to cover everything of course with regards to the barzakh but we're going to explore it in some small details inshallah so without further ado let's get straight into it so first of all what is barzakh barzakh is the state in which the person who has died is going to be in their qabr in their grave they are in that state of barzakh they are in that dimension of barzakh while they are awaiting the day of judgment and the barzakh is listed as something that is actually going to be hard for many people the imams alayhim salam actually emphasizing on this a lot we have a narration in al-kafi from Imam sadiq alayhi salatu wasalam he is asked by umar ibn yazid he asks him inni sami'tuka wa anta taqul kullu shi'atana fil jannah ala ma kana fihim he says oh imam i've heard you say that all of our shi'a are in jannah from those who are from them the imam says sadaqtuka kulluhum wallahi fil jannah the imam says yes you are right all of them i swear by allah are in jannah qala qultu ju'iltu fidak inna dhunuba kathiratun kibar he says oh imam the sins that some of us have done are a lot and they are big sins فقال أما في القيامة فكلكم في الجنة بشفاعة النبي المطاع أو وسي النبي ولكني والله أتخوف عليكم في البرزخ He says to him On the day of judgment all of you will be in Jannah by our intercession the intercession of the Prophet or the, or the successor of the Prophet عليه السلام But I only fear for you the برزخ قلت وما البرزخ He asked him and what is برزخ he says the barzakh is the grave from the moment that the individual dies until the day of judgment. So this is the barzakh and this is where the imam says I fear for you the barzakh. You see he said that in the response to what? To those who have committed a lot of sins. Because that individual he was shocked he was saying really we're all going to go to Jannah but we've done so many bad things. But the imam says Day of judgment, we've got you. We are there for your intercession. But in your grave, in Barzakh, he's saying, good luck. I'm, I fear for you. I'm worried for you with regards to Barzakh. So what we can see is that the phase of Barzakh can be a very negative experience, even for the Mu'minun, even for the Shia. Because this may be the place where they need to be purified of those evil things that they have done until they are able to come on the day of judgment and be able to be given the intercession from the Ahlul Bayt Many a time you would have heard narrations or stories in relation to the experience of the grave and the squeezing of the grave and how much you're going to be beaten and all of these things, right? This is something that we hear a lot even as kids growing up. But a lot of the time, it's very hard to be able to understand that because what we understand is first of all, we have to wait till the day of judgment to be judged. So how is it I'm already being punished and the day of judgment hasn't even come yet? Or I'm already seeing good things and the Day of Judgment hasn't even come yet. How does that work? How does the Qur'an speak about this matter? How do the Ahadith speak about this matter? And that's what we want to explore in some depth today. So again, like last week, we're going to do this in three stages. Where does the Qur'an describe the state of Barzakh? Number two, how do the Ahadith explain and describe the states of Barzakh? And number three, what is it that determines our state in Barzakh. So to start off the conversation, as we always do, we're going to start with the Quran. So we see in an ayah of the Quran in Surah Tuhud, Allah says in ayah number 106 and 107, He says after the Basmala, فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ شَقُوا فَفِي النَّارِ لَهُمْ فِيهَا زَفِيرٌ وَشَحِيقٌ He says as for those who are wretched, for them is a fire in it, they will be screaming and sighing. So this Usually, when you would read it, you would think, you know what, this is speaking about the Nar, this is speaking about Jahannam after the Day of, Ju Day of Judgment. But the next ayah actually clarifies for you which kind of Nar this is speaking about. 
Allah says, خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا مَا دَامَتِ السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ رَبُّكُ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ فَعَالٌ لِمَا يُرِيدٌ He says, they will enter within while the skies and the earth are still intact until that which Allah wills. While the skies and the earth are still intact. This is the condition or the restriction with regards to this nar. And the fact that it says that the skies and the earth are still intact, the heavens and the earth are still intact. We know that this can't be after the day of judgment because on the day of judgment, the skies and the earth are not intact. We see this in the Quran where Allah says this in Surah al haqqa in verses 13 to 16, after the Basmala, Allah says, فَإِذَا نُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ نَفْخَةٌ وَاهِدًا وَهُمِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ وَالْجِبَالُ فَدُكَّتَا دَكَّةً وَاهِدًا فَيَوْمَئِذٍ وَقَأَتِ الْوَاقِئَةً وَانْشَقَتِ السَّمَاءُ فَهِيَ يَوْمَئِذٍ وَاهِيَةً He says, so when the horn is blown with one blow, he says that the earth and the mountains will be crushed. دَكَّةً وَاهِدًا It will be crushed. فَيَوْمَئِذٍ وَقَأَتِ الْوَاقِئَةً On that day the event will occur. وَانْشَقَتِ السَّمَاءُ فَهِيَ يَوْمَئِذٍ وَاهِيَةً and this is where Allah describes the heavens collapsing. So he mentioned that the ard and the jibal, the earth and the mountains will be crushed and the, and the skies will split asunder. This is speaking about the day of judgment. So we can see that those ayat that we were reading were not speaking about the day of judgment. Allah is saying, Madamati samawatu wal ard. Until at the same time where the earth and the skies are still intact. Until that which Allah wills, until the day of judgment, when this thing will happen. Until the day of judgment, when the skies and the earth will not remain intact. It's speaking with regards to the barzakh very clearly. And then Allah says in the next ayah in verse 108 of Surah Al Hud, Allah says, Again, the same idea. As for those who are going to be happy on that day, those who have done good things, for them is Jannah, for them is paradise. They will enter within it. That time where the skies and the earth are still intact until that which Allah wills, until the day of judgment, until the skies and the heavens and the earth will not remain intact. So this is showing us that there is Jannah and there is Jahannam in Barzakh. This is a state that is within the time before the day of judgment. In Barzakh, there is a Jannatul Barzakh and there's Jahannamul Barzakh. We can see that. And we, th and we see this idea in the Ahadith as well. We see in Al Kafi, in volume number three, the Imam alayhi salatu wasalam narrates, it's narrated from Abi Basir, from Imam Sadiq alayhi salatu wasalam. Imam Sadiq says, Qala inna arwah al kuffar fi nari jahannama yu'radhuna alayha. يقولون ربنا لا تقم لنا الساعة ولا تنجز لنا ما وعدتنا ولا تلحق آخرنا بأولنا. He says that these individuals, the souls of the kafir, the disbelievers, will be in the nar of Jahannam, and it will be shown to them, it will be brought to light to them, and they will say, Oh Allah, don't bring upon us the hour, and do not bring us that which you have promised us. Because they will be already in such a severe state of punishment in the Barzakh that they can't even imagine what hellfire is going to be like after Yom Al Qiyamah. This is the state of punishment within Barzakh. And the disbelief that is mentioned here also is with regards to the enemies of the Ahl Bayt, those who reject their wilaya. As the Quran says in Surah Al Ma'idah, verse number 67, Inna Allah la yahdil qawm al kafirin. Those who disbelieve in the wilaya of Amir al Mu'mineen in the Quran, in that ayah, are mentioned as kuffar. They are disbelievers. And they've rejected the wilaya. This is the state that they will be in. And again, this shows you how important your aqidah is in the grave, in the qabr, in barzakh. And the same way that that disbeliever or that evil individual, he sees all of these punishments, the believer also sees fruits of being in a peaceful state in barzakh. We have another narration from Imam Al-Qadim from Ishaq ibn Ammar, he narrates in Al-Kafi in volume 3 also. He says, Yazuru al-Mu'minu ahlahu, he says, is the believer able to visit his relatives after death? فَقَالَ نَعَمْ فَقُلْتُ فِي كَمْ He asked, he, the Imam said, yes, he is able to do that. So he asked, how often is he able to do that? The Imam says, قَالَ 
على قدر فضائلهم منهم من يزور في كل يوم ومنهم من يزور في كل يومين ومنهم من يزور في كل ثلاثة أيام He says it is based on their virtue and their ranks in the Barzakh There are those who are able to visit their families every day some every two days and some every three days So he's setting out the principle that it is based on the rank So the companion asks ثم رأيت في مجرى كلامه أنه يقول أدناهم منزلة يزور كل جمعة He says that the one who has the, le- the least virtue and rank from the Shia, he will be able to, men- to meet his relatives every Jum'ah. He says, and when would he be able to do that? And then the Imam says, in the Zawal al-Shamsi wa mithli dhalik. He says, at the time where the uh, sunset is occurring. So at the time of Maghrib, this is where they are able to meet them. The companion asks, in what form is he able to visit his family? The Imam says, في سورة الأسفوري أو أصغر من ذلك. He says, in the form of a bird or smaller than that. فيبعث الله تعالى معه ملكا فيريه ما يسره ويستر عنه ما يكره فيرى ما يسره ويرجع إلى قرتين. He says that the individual he is sent to meet his family and a angel is sent with him. So the angel only shows him that which makes his soul happy to see. And he doesn't show him that which may he might dislike to see. For example, a soul may come back to his home and he might see that his family have forgotten him. Or it's the day of Jummah or the night of Jummah and nobody is remembering them with the Fatiha. That might make them sad. The angels won't allow them to be able to notice that fact. He will be only able to see that which makes him happy based on his virtue and his rank. And that he will be able to return then basically in a happy state. This is the virtue of the believer that is in Barzakh. He's able to be a free soul. He's able to visit his family. He has this level of virtue given to him for the true believer in the Barzakh. So, so far we've seen that there are those individuals who are good and they have a level of freedom and peace in Barzakh and those who are in actual nar, they're already experiencing such severe punishment that they can't even imagine what's coming in the hellfire. And there are those who will sleep until the day of judgment without any problems basically and they will be judged and accordingly on the day of judgment. Whether they will be put into Jannah or whether they will be put into the Nar. We have in a narration from Imam al Bakr alayhi salatu wasalam, Qila li Muhammad ibn Ali, and this mentioned in Ma'ani al Akhbar on page 289. The Imam is asked, Mal maut, what is death? Faqala, huwa al nawmu alladhi ya'tikum kulla layla. He says that it is the sleep that comes to you every night, illa annahu tawilun muddatu la yuntabuhu minhu illa yawm al qiyamah. He says that except that this sleep is such a long sleep that you would not even be able to notice it. Except that this sleep is so long, however, it won't be noticed until the day of judgment. فَمَنْ رَأَى فِي نَوْمِهِ مِنْ أَصْنَافِ الْفَرَحِ مَا لَا يُقَادِرْ قَدْرُهُ وَمِنْ أَصْنَافِ الْأَهْوَالِ مَا لَا يُقَادِرْ قَدْرُهُ He says that, how is it when you're sleeping? You know when you're in a state of dreaming, right? And you have a happy dream. How happy are you to be in that dream? Like you don't want to wake up. And when you feel like pain or suffering in your dream, how bad is that suffering that you just want to wake up straight away, right? He says, think about that level of emotion that you feel while you're sleeping. He says, The same thing. He says, this is death. So be ready for it. And the same way there are those people who sleep and they don't have happy or bad dreams, right? They wake up in the morning and they just felt like they just went to sleep. And there are those individuals that will experience that very experience in the Barzakh as well. There'll be those who sleep. And the comparison to sleep is really interesting because it's, a, it's almost like somewhat a complete example that is able to make us understand to a great extent what it will feel like. And we see this comparison made in the Quran as well. Allah says in ayah number 42 of Surah Al-Zumar after the Basmala, Allah says it is Allah that takes away the souls when an individual dies. And that is the same soul that doesn't die in its sleep. He says that he holds on to the soul that which it is now destined to die and he sends back the one 
who is still destined to live a little longer. This is a beautiful ayah. Inna fi dhalika la ayatin yatafakkarun. He says, indeed, in this there are signs for a people who ponder and think about the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a direct comparison to sleep. He still mentions the nafs being taken away. And that's why we see this comparison working very well. So there are those who just sleep, those who had the middle ground, those who were mustad afun, they didn't have the ability or they didn't have the opportunity to find the truth or discern from truth and falsehood. For people like us as Shia, we can't hope to be from those people because we are the people that are exposed to truth every day in the Husseiniyat, in our Majalis, in the Quran. We see the truth and we see the falsehood every single day. If we are the people that stay away from the truth and we go towards falsehood, we can never expect to be from those who didn't have a chance. But for those who didn't have a chance or didn't have an opportunity, they are those who sleep and they are judged accordingly on the Day of Judgment. And that is the majority of people. The majority of people will just sleep because you can't expect for somebody who didn't have the opportunity whatsoever to learn the truth to come into the grave and have Munkar and Nakir asking them, you know, what is you, who's your Lord? What is, who's your prophet? Who's your Imam? They're just going to be like, I don't know about any of this. Like, how can I be judged for something? I didn't have the opportunity to learn. I didn't have any idea about what you're asking me. So the general populace of people that don't have the ability to be able to discern the truth from falsehood, they are these people who sleep. And on the Day of Judgment, they will be judged accordingly. It's not to say that they will be going straight to Jannah or straight to Jahannam. They will have their according, their tests on that day. And based on those tests, they will be judged. So there are five possibilities of states that you can be in Barzakh. There's either you have Jannatul Barzakh, and that is for the highest state. That is for the believers who had taqwa, that they obeyed the uh, awamir of Allah and the Ahlul Bayt salam, they were on the highest level so they will be in Jannatul Barzakh there are those like for example we can say for sure that the highest ranking of the companions people like Salman and Baghdad and Abu Dhar these individuals they are in Jannatul Barzakh they are already so free and at the highest ranks of that Jannah and then we have al qubur Al-Jinan that is that the grave will be made into a garden from the gardens of paradise. It won't be paradise itself, but it will be a taster of it. Like this, these are for the people that are good, but they aren't at the highest level. They are good and they are Shia and they were obedient and they did good things. These individuals, they will be given a garden from the gardens of paradise, a taster for what is to come in the hereafter. Then we have the middle ground, those who sleep from the moment of their death till the day of judgment and they will be judged accordingly on the day of judgment and then we have al qubur al niran we have the graves of those who were evil they did bad things and they are tasting that punishment and we have all have the possibility of being in that right we all have the possibility of being within that to purify our sins and to be from a part of hellfire to be inside that where we are being purified, where we're being purified, or there may be people that aren't even being purified and they are just being punished within that level of evil. And then we have Jahannam al Barzakh. We have the Jahannam that is mentioned in that ayah of the Quran where it mentions screaming and shouting and wailing, right? This is the Jahannam that is there for those who were the true enemies of Ahlul Bayt Some people, they ask us this thing, they say, these enemies of Ahlul Bayt, for example, like Yazid, well, how can we say that he is in Jannah? Obviously, there's still the Day of Judgment for him to be judged. Maybe Allah might have mercy on him. No, that's not correct at all. Yazid is in Jahannam as we speak. The enemies of Ahlul Bayt they are in Jahannam as we speak. They are in Jahannam al Barzakh. Right, And for some of them, like they are already at the highest level of Jahannam and they, they can just see that their punishment is just going to increase and increase after the Day of Judgment. These individuals are already in the hellfire. So this is the five possibilities that you have. You have Jannatul Barzakh, you have al qubur Al-Jinan, you have those who sleep, you have al qubur Al-Niran and you have Jahannam Al-Barzakh. These are the five possibilities that you could possibly be in in Barzakh. So what is it that determines which state you go into? Again, it is the Aqeedah, the Aqeedah and the closeness to the Imam. We have a narration here in volume number three of Al-Kafi. 
we have from Imam Sadiq alayhi salatu wasalam. He mentions these different possibilities that we mentioned. He says, Inna lil qabri kalaman fi kulli yawmin yaqul. He says that the qabr, the grave, has words to say in every single day. He says, Ana baytul ghurba, ana baytul wahsha, ana baytul dood, ana al qabru. He says, I am the house of loneliness, I am the house of wailing and sadness. He says, Ana rawdatun min riyadh al jannah, aw hufratun min. He says either I am a garden from the gardens of paradise or I am a pit from the pits of hell. These are the statuses that the grave can go through. And all of these are dependent on who? On the Imam salam, and the connection that you have towards the Imam. And this is why I want to finish on this hadith. And this is exploring the idea that we mentioned in last week's episode where we said that heaven and hell are realities that are close to us, except that there's veils upon us and we can't see that they are that close to us. This is a beautiful hadith that we find in uh, Al-Mahasin of Sheikh Al-Barqi. But I'm reading for me from Bihar Al-Anwar in volume number 65, page 102. Musa ibn Bakr, one of the companions of the Imams, he narrates, he says, Kunna inda Abi Abdullahi alayhi salam, faqal rajlun fil majlis. He said that we were with Imam Sadiq one day and one of the individuals that were in the majlis said, I ask Allah for Jannah. He's praying for Jannah. So Imam Sadiq responds to him and he says, Antum fil Jannah an la minha. He says, You are already in paradise. So ask Allah that He does not take you out of paradise. So this is a strange statement. The individual says, فَقَالُوا جُئِلْنَا فِدَاك نَحْنُ فِي الدُّنْيَا He says to the Imam, May we be sacrificed for you. We're still in this world. We're not in the hereafter. How can we be in Jannah? The Imam says, أَلَسْتُمْ تُقِرُّونَ بِإِمَامَتَنَا Are you not those who believe in our Imams? They says, نَعَمْ قَالُوا نَعَمْ فَقَالَ هَذَا مَعْنَ الْجَنَّةِ أَلَّذِي مَنْ أَخَرَّ بِهِ كَانَ فِي الْجَنَّةِ فَاسْأَلُ اللَّهِ أَنْ لَا يَسْلُبُكَمْ He says that this is the meaning of Jannah. To believe in our Imam, to be close to us in our wilaya. This is the meaning of Jannah. This is what you are in right now. Jannah is right, has encompassed you the same way that hell encompasses the disbelievers. As it mentioned in the Quran, the Jannah is all around them in their reality. They are actually in Jannah at that moment. They just don't feel it. This is what the Imam is saying to them. And this is the understanding of us and our souls already being in that state of Jannah and Jahannam. As soon as we pass away, we see the veils get lifted and we see the state that we are actually in. Either we see the beauty of our belief, we see the beauty of Muhammad and Ali alayhim salam, or we see the ugliness of our belief in our being opposed to Allah and the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. This is the reality that we see once our souls are removed and the reality that we see in Barzakh in those five possibilities that we have discussed. These are the realities of our souls even today, but we are unable to perceive our realities. And this takes us back to many of the episodes that we have done previously with regards to Ma'rif of the Imam. The Ma'rif of the Imam is the key thing in our religion. Dhurwatul Amri wa sinamuhu wa miftahuhu Every, the key of this matter, the key of the religion, the most central thing in the religion is obedience to the Imam after having gained his ma'rifah. That is the thing that will save you in the removal of your soul in Barzakh and on the Day of Judgment. That is the connection that will save you. We've mentioned also that the Shia of the Akhir zaman are supposed to be those who are the greatest nation because they are able to connect with their Imam and feel as if he is in their presence even though he is in Ghayba. You see, this is that same principle that if we are able to feel the Imam's presence in our lives today, we will feel his presence at every juncture and every state because it is our souls that have made a connection with the Imam of our time. And that is why that is the most important of the usul of the religion that we cling to the wilaya, we cling to our obedience to the Ahlul Bayt and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is what will give us that beauty 
when we close our eyes and move to the next world. That's why we say in the du'a, Allahumma arifni nafsak, fa innaka in lam tu'arifni nafsak, lam arif nabiyak. Allahumma arifni rasulak, fa innaka in lam tu'arifni rasulak, lam arif hujjatak. Allahumma arifni hujjatak, fa innaka in lam tu'arifni hujjatak, dalaltu an dini. This is the core of religion. You say, Oh Allah, allow me to know you. For if I cannot know you, then I cannot know your Prophet. And allow me to know your Prophet. Because if I'm not able to know your Prophet, then I'm not able to know his Hujjah, your Hujjah. And if I'm not able to know your Hujjah, then I will be misguided from my religion. That is the Dhurwatul Amr. That is the central matter of this religion. That if we are not able to know the Hujjah, that is the point where we will be misguided from our religion. That was the point where we will see the ugliness of our belief when we close our eyes to go on to the next world. And that is the goal and the efforts that all of our things, everything that we do, including our salat, including our psalm, including our zakat and hajj, and everything that we do is with that goal of being able to be in the ta'a of the imam ba'da ma'rifat, to increase in our ma'rifah and be in the ta'a of the imam. That is the central core of our religion and that is what will save us in the hereafter. So I hope that has been a interesting episode for you with regards to Barzakh. Next week we'll be speaking about the Day of Judgment which is a huge topic but we'll be discussing it from small details the same way that we have done with regards to the removal of the soul and with regards to Barzakh. I'll see you again for that next week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.